Welcome to the Singapore Management University podcast series, where we feature the latest insights and perspectives from our faculty. Sustainable agriculture aims at growing food in an ecologically and ethically responsible manner by using practices that enhance environmental quality and natural resource base while maintaining the economic viability of farm operations. Globally, there is increased focus on sustainable agriculture owing to a variety of factors. First, we are anticipating a global surge in demand for food as there will be 2 billion people more to feed by 2050. Furthermore, the global agricultural industry has heightened economic implications as it is today the main source of income for more than a third of the world's population. In Asia, Sustainable agriculture, which contributes to greater food security and poverty reduction, also helps to fuel Singapore's continuous development as the largest commodity trading hub in the region. Owner Boya Butler is an Associate Professor of Operations Management at the SMU Lee Kong Chien School of Business. He specialises in research on supply chain risk management with a focus on agri-businesses. In this podcast, Associate Professor Boya Butler shares his research, which proposes a sustainable crop allocation policy to help farmers choose which crops to grow on their farmland while optimizing their profitability. Professor, you specialize in research on global supply chain and operations management, sometimes with a special focus on agribusinesses. What motivates or inspires you to choose this area of research? Uh, sure. Um, well, operations management in the first place is about um, the design and management of uh, processes, activities, resources that create goods and services uh, through converting raw material into uh, final products, right? And uh, supply chain management is actually uh, a part of the operations management field. Um, it's uh, Supply chain management is actually related to coordinating the uh, physical, financial, and information flows among the supply chain partners uh, for a particular product that starts from the, the raw material suppliers all the way to the end, uh, which is the retailers, right? Um, now, uh, within that stream, I focus on uh, agricultural supply chains or so-called farm-to-fork supply chains, right? Uh, my inspiration, I would say, uh, for... Uh, this particular topic is threefold. Um, first, agriculture is actually very important for the society. Uh, right now, um, people living in hunger, right now it's close to 1 billion. And by 2050, another 2 billion people will be added to that. And believe it or not, for the one-third of world's population, agriculture is the main source of income. Right? Uh, agriculture is also very vital uh, for environment. Because agriculture uses um, water, land, right? And these key resources that are becoming scarce. And also um, there is a lot of uh, chemical usage in agriculture. First, fertilizer, pesticides, right? Non-renewable energy, right? So um, if you can somehow increase the efficiency within the agricultural context, that would have a positive impact both on the societal level as well as the environmental level, right? And so that's, uh, these are the two reasons, actually. And the third reason is also a little bit of context-dependent. Um, for Southeast Asia, uh, agriculture is also very important. We can give examples from, uh, you know, palm oil, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, right? More than 90% of world's palm oil production belongs to these countries. Uh, India, um, rice, Thailand, rice, you know, uh, cocoa beans in uh, Indonesia, Malaysia. We can increase the examples like that. Uh, Singapore is also uh, relevant in this context. Uh, obviously, given the land constraints, there is not much of agriculture in Singapore. But uh, Singapore is the largest uh, agricultural trading hub. One of the largest, if not the largest, uh, by volume. So there is a lot of agricultural-related ag agricultural activity going on. That was the third reason why I was actually interested in this topic. I understand that in the context of sustainable agriculture, 
The subject of crop planning has received considerable attention in the research literature of both operations management as well as agricultural economics. Why is this so? All right. Uh, to answer that question, maybe I should start with uh, the meaning of sustainable agriculture. So, sustainable agriculture aims at growing um, food in an ecologically and ethically responsible manner uh, by using practices that, ha- that enhance environmental quality and natural uh, resource base while maintaining the uh, profitability for the farmer. Right? Uh, I think it is very natural uh, that agricultural economics field uh, do contribute a lot to this uh, sustainable agriculture, but what may seem surprising for people is that operations management has a lot to contribute. While historically speaking, agriculture is one of the uh, main fields uh, that both operations management and operations research scholars have contributed a lot. And it's because uh, there are so many processes involved in farm operations. As I told you, operations management is about designing and managing these processes, right? So there is that kind of a natural parallel in that sense, right? Basically, what is crop planning? Crop planning is actually the ABC of farming. It's about uh, how to allocate the farmland uh, among available crops in each growing season. Crop planning is about making that decision, right? It is a vital part of farm operations. That is, that is why that is, uh, there are a lot of people working in this area. Another reason why there are a lot of people working in this area is because it's very challenging. Now, why is it challenging? Maybe I can give you a small example, um, a very practical example also. Uh, if you look at a typical farmer in the U.S., right, uh, what they do every year is they actually make a decision, uh, in most cases, about how to allocate their farmland between corn and soybean. And that decision uh, is complex for a, a few reasons. First of all, when they make that decision, they have to think about crop rotation benefits. Now, what does it mean? Basically, when you want to grow corn in a particular field, you had better grow it on a rotated farmland, meaning soybean was grown previously, rather than doing it on a non-rotated farmland where corn was grown in the previous growing season. Now, these uh, crop rotation benefits are attributed to Uh, increasing soil quality. For example, if you uh, grow corn right after soybean, soybean releases nitrogen to the soil, which is an important fertilizer for corn growth. Okay, that's one reason. Another uh, benefit for uh, crop rotation is due to breaking the pest cycles. As you may know, pests are uh, actually very important, very detrimental, I would say, for the for the farm yield uh, so if you keep growing corn in a particular field then you will let the pest in this case corn rootworm to grow and uh, damage the crop but if you keep rotating then you don't you don't let the the pest to um, to reproduce right uh, anyway so uh, that's one challenge so in, in a way the the farmer should consider these rotation benefits Now, that being said, when you think about it, okay, so how about farmer does this? You know, just divide the land into two, half and half, and every year, half corn, half soybean, and then following year, just rotate, right? Uh, Sounds very simple, and believe me, a lot of farmers actually do this in practice, but uh, things are not that easy because both corn and soybean, these are uh, commodity crops or cash crops, uh, meaning their uh, revenue streams are highly volatile, Now, what happens is that uh, every year what farmer they do is they actually have an opinion on what would be the respective revenue for corn and soybean. And because these are highly volatile, if they believe that corn will be much more profitable than soybean, they have an incentive to allocate more farmland to the corn, meaning breaking the rotation, right? But then if they want to do that, when do they do that? And how much do they want to break, right? which makes the question or the the crop planning decision is much more challenging. That is why there is a lot of research in this area, right? You were recently involved in a research that examined dynamic farmland allocation. Can you tell us more? Uh, Sure. Uh, Basically, in this research, we examine uh, the crop planning decision. Uh, Again, you can 
think of this uh, corn uh, and soybean allocation. It's a good example, even though the papers, uh, the research is more general than that. Actually, it has an interesting story how I started this research. So, I mean, I have been working on agriculture for um, quite a few years. I have other research, and uh, I was familiar about this problem. I have read a lot about this uh, on Financial Times because uh, every uh, summer time in the U.S., that's the time where you decide how to make these allocations. And, you know, they write articles about how uh, farmers are actually um, having difficulties in making this decision. So I was always interested in that. So um, one day I was uh, flying back from New York to Singapore. I, uh, I, I gave a talk at Columbia University uh, related to another paper of mine related to agriculture. And I was sitting with this young lady and uh, we started chatting. It's a long flight, right? So uh, she asked me what I am doing and I showed her actually the type of research that I do. And she said, you know what? My father is a farmer and he has this problem. So, you know, he has to decide how to allocate his land, but he doesn't know. What he does is he basically does half and half and keeps rotating every year. He knows that that is not the best thing to do, but that is easy for him to do. Now, after hearing from her, I said, okay, now this is a good problem to work on. So I started working on it. I invited two of my colleagues, one from SMU in, my, in the operations uh, group, Helen Zhou, and also uh, another uh, faculty member from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, Jawad Nasri. Um, that is how we started. Um, basically, um, this research, as I said, we examine the uh, crop planning decision, in particular how a farmer should allocate his farmland between two crops every growing season, in considering multiple uh, growing season in the presence of crop rotation benefits, right? So there are uh, four specific questions that we examine. Uh, first, how to do this? Um, second, uh, how does revenue uncertainty, which is very critical for uh, commodity crops, right? High volatility for uh, corn and soybean revenues. How does revenue uncertainty affect the farmer's profitability? Also, uh, what we examine is that uh, when you uh, grow uh, crops with uh, rotation benefits, it's actually part of sustainable agriculture because uh, you are uh, contributing positively to the environment. Uh, you can also choose uh, to just uh, grow one type of crop, which is kind of part of the industrial agriculture. That right? Uh, what we look at is what is really the value of uh, doing this in a sustainable fashion. And we want we, we compare it with the benchmarks case where what if you just grow one of the crops, right? Uh, kind of we would like to see the, the benefit of that uh, in terms of profit wise, not environmental wise, but profit wise. And the last question um, is uh, more about, OK, we will um, look at this decision, how to make this decision in the best way. But then if it becomes too difficult to implement in practice, can we actually come up with a heuristic uh, solution, meaning a much more simple way uh, from our findings, obviously, and uh, give it back to the farmers uh, and then see whether this heuristic is actually a good heuristic, implementable in practice, better performs better than what farmers are actually doing in practice, right? So these were the main questions that uh, we were interested in. And um, it is a very uh, significant piece of research because... Uh, academically speaking, in the literature, there is no work that has actually uh, been able to characterize the optimal or the best allocation policy, right? Uh, and also, again, there is no work that kind of uh, investigates how revenue uncertainty affects the, the farmer's profitability as well as this allocation decision. So we are actually filling that gap. And practically speaking, it is very important because a lot of farmers are actually making these decisions over and over again every year. So if we can find a little bit of an improved way for, for them to make this decision, uh, that should have a huge practical implication. What methodology did you employ for this research and what were your findings? Okay, in terms of methodology, basically the paper uses uh, analytical modeling first. 
uh, what we do is we build a mathematical model to represent the decision process of a farmer uh, that makes this uh, crop allocation, farmland allocation decision over multiple growing season. Specifically, uh, we are using stochastic dynamic programming model. Uh, but to be able to answer some of our research questions, especially the value of sustainable agriculture, right, the, the value of a heuristic policy, what we do is we also use data uh, to calibrate uh, our model parameters to represent a typical farmer in practice and uh, say something about that farmer's behavior. And to do that, we basically uh, calibrate our model to represent a typical farmer growing corn and soybean in Iowa, U.S. Uh, why Iowa? Because that's the largest uh, corn and soybean uh, producing uh, state in the U.S. and as well as in the world. It's like it's the largest, like the Corn Belt, right? Uh, and uh, we use data from U.S. Department of uh, Agriculture as well as data from earlier academic uh, papers. Now, in terms of our findings, what do we find? Uh, we were able to characterize this optimal uh, allocation policy. Um, also, we were able to uh, figure out how revenue uncertainty affects uh, the farmer's profitability as well as this allocation policy in a way we provide a roadmap to farmers in managing their allocation when the revenue for uh, revenue for volatility uh, for uh, corn and soybean change uh, i'm not going to get into the details of but we provide these you know the roadmap how, what to do but on top of that i would say our two major findings would be this first um, we find that Doing uh, your crop planning decision, making that decision in a sustainable way, meaning considering multiple crops with rotation benefits, has a lot of economic benefits compared to doing it using only a single crop. Uh, it is not very surprising to see that being able to use two crops is better than using one. But what we find is that in terms of magnitude, it is extremely significant. In our, uh, in our simulation study, in our numerical instances, and we did cover very uh, a broad uh, set of instances, uh, the minimum profit loss, uh, if you just use a single crop, is uh, more than 10% of the farmer's profit. That's We talk about a lot of money there, right? Uh, so... This is important because, uh, academically speaking, there is so much work in the literature that talks about the environmental benefits of doing the crop planning in a sustainable way, but there is not so much work about what is actually the economic impact. Now, we actually provide it, it does have a huge impact, right? Also, I would say the main result uh, of this paper is, um, look, our optimal policy, yes, we kind of crack it down, but it is not easy to implement. Now, what we do is we uh, devise a heuristic policy based on the optimal policy, which uh, farmers can actually directly use in practice. What we show is that this policy is not only better than any policy right now that the farmers are using, uh, and they are using really like this half and half rotate, very simple policies, but also it is its performance is very close to our optimal policy, right? So I would say this is kind of the main result in the paper. We, we were able to craft a heuristic policy which can be directly implementable in practice, which performs much better than what farmers are doing right now, and it's also very close to the optimal policy, which is not easily implementable in practice. What is the significance of these findings? And how can businesses and farmers benefit from these results? As I said, so, I mean, we have a bunch of results, right? But when you think about uh, our, uh, the, the result that I talked uh, lastly, right, uh, the heuristic policy that we suggest, as I said, farmers can actually directly implement this policy in making their allocation decision. Now, this policy is very simple. In a nutshell, what it does is this uh, to 
help farmers uh, to make this allocation decision based on considering only two growing seasons. So when they make this decision, this growing season, normally they are supposed to think for another 10-15 years, which is very difficult to do and farmers will not do that. What they do is they only think about um, one season, which is this season, right? What we tell them, you know, you just uh, add one more season, just consider two growing seasons, and that will be already good enough. And we show them, we give them a recipe how to do that, right? I think that is kind of uh, one of the, the biggest practical contributions uh, of this paper. And the second one, as I said, it kind of shows that uh, economically speaking, following a sustainable, uh, doing the crop planning in a sustainable manner has huge economic benefits. So um, that is that would be the second practical contribution. I have presented this uh, paper in uh, several platforms, including uh, uh, leading conferences, academic conferences, a lot of universities. Uh, and there has been good recognition for the paper, and it has been also downloaded quite a lot of times. I do believe that it will have its practical impact. So going forward, I guess what we can do is we can approach directly to big farmers or uh, consulting firms that help these farmers, small farmers, to make their decisions uh, so that we can introduce our framework and our results to these consulting firms and they can actually uh, transfer this knowledge to these farmers. But I wouldn't be surprised if farmers, some of the farmers have, or the consulting firms, have already downloaded our paper and started learning about that. Are these findings applicable in Asia? The theoretical part of the paper is applicable anywhere. Theoretical part meaning how to do this crop planning decision, right? We characterize the optimal policy. This doesn't really um, use any information uh, based on a particular crop, right? And same thing with how revenue uncertainty affects the farmer's profitability. But when it comes to the value of sustainable agriculture, the value of the heuristic policy compared to what fa farmers are doing in practice, that um, part of our findings, they do uh, hinge on the uh, particular crop char characteristics. So we use uh, corn and soybean, as I said, right? But uh, basically, our paper provides the methodology for other people to actually use, uh, to do the same analysis uh, using different crop characteristics. I mean, in Asia, first of all, are there uh, farmers doing uh, crop rotations? Yes, there are. I mean, when you think about that, in, for example, in Thailand, uh, they do a lot of rice, sugarcane, and cassava on a rotated uh, basis. In India, the same. Right? I mean, we can increase these numbers. What uh, we need to do is we need to look at these individual crop characteristics, which will be very important for, uh, for the model itself, right? Because they will be the parameters of my mathematical model, estimate these parameters and fit in these parameters into my model and then calculate all these um, performance measures that I have been talking about. It is easily doable and we provide the machinery. Thank you, Professor. My pleasure.